Since the doctor said I lost some of my memory, Colin Pike came to see me every day. On the day before I was discharged, he suddenly asked me, Carrie, do you remember who your boyfriend is? I looked at the man sitting in the corner with a mischievous smile. Colin Pike's younger brother, Alan Pike. He has been coming every day since I was hospitalized, saying very little, but he has captured my aesthetic taste. My best friend said that before I lost my memory, Alan was pursuing me. So, I pointed at him and said, he's my boyfriend. Ding! Wisnavel reminds you to click the subscribe button in the bottom right corner to read the complete novel. I don't know if it's just my imagination, but after I said that, Colin seemed to sigh with relief. He showed his first smile in days. Well, Alan is your boyfriend. Alan sneered and stood up. Broad shoulders, slender waist, and a remarkable appearance. He is simply walking hormones. I stared at him as he approached me. I'll come to pick you up from the hospital tomorrow, my girlfriend. His voice had a lingering charm. Suddenly, my face turned red, and my heart started beating fast as I watched his figure. When I turned my head, I saw Colin's displeased face, so I suppressed my smile. Why haven't you left yet? Colin's eyes dimmed. I'm getting engaged in a few days, so I can't come to pick you up tomorrow. I'm sorry. I waved my hand. Thanks, but I have my boyfriend here. Alan appeared in the ward on time the next day. He took my luggage and naturally held my hand. After completing the discharge procedures, he took me home, to his home. He told me that my room was the guest room. I saw him enter the master bedroom and couldn't help but ask. Don't you sleep in the same room as me? Alan was clearly taken aback. Then he said with a hint of grievance. You don't want me to sleep in the same room as you. The doctor said I forgot many things, and I couldn't remember why I didn't want to sleep in the same room as him. But if I were to straightforwardly say that I wanted to sleep in the same room as him now, I couldn't bring myself to do it. So I coughed lightly. Let's arrange it like this for now, and we can discuss this issue later when I recover. He readily agreed, but his handsome smile sent shivers down my spine. Once Alan entered his room, he didn't come out again, and he was nowhere to be seen at mealtime. So I had to go to the kitchen and cook. While cooking, a strong scent enveloped me from behind. What are you doing? Instinctively, I took a step back, and a solid male body pressed against my back, the hot temperature seeping through the thin fabric. It was so hot that I dropped the spatula in my hand. I hurriedly crouched down to pick it up, but my legs pressed against his, fitting perfectly. Before I could react, a pair of strong arms lifted me up and placed me aside. When I turned around, all I could see was Alan's flustered figure. Although I've forgotten many things, common sense remains. Realizing what I had just done, my entire face, including my neck, turned red. After finishing cooking, I I went to call him. When he came out, he didn't mention the kitchen incident. Instead, he said, my brother is getting engaged tomorrow, and as my girlfriend, you have to come with me. I nodded. Then I suddenly thought of something. Doesn't that mean I'll be meeting your family in a way? Alan resumed his carefree look. You've already met them. Just be yourself. With Alan saying that, I felt relieved. At the engagement banquet, Alan took me to greet his relatives and friends. I felt a bit uneasy. Alan, why do I feel like they're looking at me strangely? Alan's lips curled up. Yuri too beautiful. They're afraid you'll steal the limelight from the main characters today. I felt a bit shy. I dressed up today, not to steal his future sister-in-law's thunder, just didn't want to embarrass him. While I was in the restroom, I overheard people talking outside the stall. I can't believe Colin is actually going to marry Hadley Madden. Who knows what Carrie Turner will do when she regains her memory? What can she do? Colin doesn't love her. If it weren't for her privileged background, why would Colin let her cling to him for so many years? I saw her with Alan just now. Could it be that she changed her target to the younger brother? God, Carrie is still so promiscuous even after losing her memory. That's enough. Carrie has always been good to you guys. The voices outside quieted down. I stayed in the stall for a while. When I came out, I saw Alan waiting at the door. He looked at me with a smile that wasn't quite a smile. Were you waiting for me to come in and find you? I inexplicably blushed. You wish. He smirked and came to hold my hand. I think about it every day. I lightly tapped his hand on the back. Alan, I heard them say that before I lost my memory. I liked your brother. Alan chuckled softly. Softly. He doesn't have what it takes. UV always been mine. Our palms interlocked, sending a tingling sensation through me. I pulled my hand away as if shocked by electricity, but he held it again. I'll take you to eat something delicious. I nodded. Alan said I used to avoid eating desserts to maintain my figure. I thought it was silly. So when Colin and his fiancée came to us, I had already eaten quite a few pastries. Alan casually wiped the corner of my mouth. I held his hand. Alan, your brother and your future sister-in-law are here. He replied with a hmm and held my hand back. Back, pulling me towards him. His long, distinct fingers grazed over my slender fingers, without saying a word. The atmosphere became somewhat tense. I stood up, raised my glass to them, and wished them a happy engagement. Colin's fiancée, Hadley Madden, looked back and forth between Alan and me, then smiled lightly. You two seem to have a great relationship. I also wish you an early engagement. My hand trembled, and I forced a dry laugh, trying to brush it off. Little did I know that Alan would respond seriously. It's coming soon. Weary already considering the date. Colin immediately looked 
looked at me. Is that so, Carrie? I nervously replied, why yes. Colin wanted to ask more, but Alan didn't give him the chance and sent him away. In the car, Alan helped me fasten my seatbelt. Shall I take you for a drive? Okay. But I soon regretted it. Once we left the city, Alan stepped on the gas pedal. I held on for dear life, gripping the seatbelt without making a sound. Unfortunately, Alan had no self-awareness about going for a drive, and he pressed the gas pedal harder and harder. I was tense all over, on the verge of tears. If only I hadn't gotten in his car. The car stopped by the seaside, and I pushed the door open and got out, vomiting with tears in my eyes. When I turned around, Alan had somehow brought out a bottle of alcohol and was sitting on the beach, beckoning to me. I couldn't believe it. You brought me here for a joyride just to drink these two sips of alcohol? He tilted his head back and took a sip. I just thought you might need a drink today. What a scoundrel. As a patient who had just been discharged from the hospital, with medication still ongoing, he wanted me to drink? The next second, I heard him laugh again. You can't drink, so I'll drink for you. The consequence of not stopping him was that I had to endure a two-hour drive back to the city as if facing a great enemy. When we entered the elevator, Alan reached out his long arm and hooked my waist. That enchanting face of his was just inches away, adding a touch of charm due to his intoxication. I stared at him blankly. Alan tightened his arm and leaned closer. Carrie, am I handsome? I nodded. Do you like me? I nodded again. Then, how about we sleep together tonight? I nodded once more. Only after nodding did I realize that I had fallen into his trap. I became angry and ashamed. Alan, are you drunk or not? He clung to my shoulder shamelessly. I pushed him away, but he didn't budge. When the elevator doors opened, he suddenly bent down, carried me horizontally, and headed straight for the master bedroom. I panicked. Alan, that's your room. In just a second, Alan changed direction. Then let's go to your room. The lights were off, but Alan put me on the bed and pressed down on me. His hand just slipped under my clothes when the room suddenly lit up. Colin stood at the foot of the bed, shouting in anger. What are you two doing? Alan was the first to react. He quickly pulled the blanket over me, while his other hand was still inside my clothes. The corner of Alan's lips curved deeply. What do you think we're doing? Colin approached Alan with a serious face. Come with me. Alan let go and maliciously pinched me. Wait for me obediently. But Alan didn't come back. I received a call from Alan when I was half asleep. He sounded weak and told me that he was in pain. That's when I found out that he had been admitted to the hospital. After inquiring several times, I finally learned what had happened from my best friend. After Colin dragged Alan away, they quarreled and got into a fight. Alan couldn't defeat Colin and ended up in the hospital. When I arrived at the hospital, Alan was lying on the bed, groaning. His hands and feet were in casts, his head was wrapped in thick bandages, and there were still bruises on the corners of his mouth. I was dumbfounded. Did your brother do all this? Alan hesitated to speak. Carrie, he won't let me touch you. I was indignant. Even if he's your brother, he's being too overbearing. Alan's eyes were full of joy. So, are you saying that once I'm better, we can still continue? What else do you want to continue? Colin pushed open the door and entered. When he saw Alan, his face suddenly turned dark. What are you up to again? Alan shrunk back, resembling a pitiful victim. I stood in front of Alan and said displeasedly. You, Alan's brother. Not only did you beat him like this, but you also come here to threaten him. Do you believe I'll call the police? Colin frowned. I didn't hit him. After you took him away last night, he ended up in the hospital. If it wasn't you, then who was it? Colin's expression grew even darker. Carrie Turner, he wanted to do those things to you. Are you actually protecting him? Do you want something to happen between you and him? I didn't understand. He's my boyfriend. I assent it normal for something to happen between us? He's not. Hiss, Carrie, it hurts so much. Alan suddenly spoke up. I anxiously asked, what's wrong? Where does it hurt? Alan pointed to the corners of his mouth. It needs to be treated here. Following his instructions, I carefully applied the medicine to him. After applying the medicine, Alan still complained of pain. I leaned closer and gently blew on the corners of his mouth. We were very close, and I could see Alan's eyelashes fluttering and undisguised joy in his eyes. Does it still hurt? I asked. Alan looked at Colin and tugged at the corners of his mouth. It still hurt. I'll blow on it again. When Colin left, he slammed the door of the ward, making a loud noise. During Alan's hospitalization, I came to the hospital to visit him every day. On that day, I arrived a little late due to something, and as soon as I reached the door of the ward, I heard someone talking inside. It was Colin. He said, Carrie will recover her memory sooner or later, and she will know that you are pretending to be sick and deceiving her. She hates being lied to the most. Alan casually replied, When she recovers her memory, you'll be the first one she won't spare. Colin clenched his fist. She won't fall in love with you either. Alan chuckled softly but didn't say anything more. After Colin left, I entered the ward. As soon as I arrived, Alan put on a sickly appearance and even wanted me to feed him. I found it amusing, but I couldn't bear to refuse him. After being discharged from the hospital, Alan removed the plaster cast. He either stayed in a wheelchair or always found an excuse for me to support him. Until that day, he fell asleep in a daze, got up to drink water, and saw me standing next to the
to the refrigerator. I looked at him with a smile. Alan lazily put the water back and shamelessly pulled me towards him. I dreamt last night that a master cured my leg. I let him embrace me without giving a definite response. Alan sighed lightly. Forget it, I won't pretend anymore. I've been so obvious, don't you know what I'm thinking? I pretended not to know. What are you thinking? Suddenly, Alan laughed, a smile that sent shivers down my spine. When he put me on the soft bed, his eyes were so gentle they could melt. Carrie, can I? I circled his neck and asked back. If I were to say no, would you stop? No. Alan spoke with conviction, and even though I cried out in pain, he didn't stop. But after it was over, he looked at me like a clueless teenager, didn't say anything, and carried me to clean up. In my days, I felt him kissing me over and over again. Carrie, I'm really happy. You belong to me, and only me in this lifetime. After that night, Alan became particularly clingy towards me. Outside, he never let go of my hand, and at home, he wanted to keep me attached to him. I frowned. Alan, haven't you felt that you're being too clingy? He played with my long hair and leaned in to take a breath. Do you dislike me being clingy to you? No, I don't. Alan chuckled lightly and held my chin, kissing me. I was startled and placed my hand against his chest. Alan, we just finished an hour ago. Alan bit my earlobe and mumbled. We haven't had a deep conversation in bed for an hour. Is it too frequent? Too frequent? I thought anything less than 24 hours was too little. Please, stop talking. Lately, he has been tossing me around in bed so much that I feel a bit drained, and I find myself sleeping longer and longer. Finally, Alan realized that things couldn't continue like this, so he started taking me to his friend's gatherings. At the entrance of the club, Alan received a phone call, saying that he needed to take care of something. He asked me to wait for him in the private room. Baby, I'll be there soon. I walked to the door of the private room and was about to push it open when I suddenly heard my name being mentioned inside. I ascend Carrie just a plaything that Colin got tired of? Only that idiot Alan doesn't mind her. Colin has good taste. He took advantage of her amnesia to dump her. Otherwise, how many times would she have cuckolded you after marriage? But speaking of which, Carrie has a good figure. If it weren't for Alan making the first move, I would also want to have some fun with her. All right, that's enough. She was once Colin's woman. Show him some face, right, Colin? By the way, Colin, if Carrie recovers her memory and comes back to haunt you, what will you do? It took a long time for Colin's voice to finally come through. It depends on when she recovers her memory. I clenched my fists, wanting to push the door open and demand an explanation. But someone beat me to it and pushed the door open. I only had time to see a figure rushing in before various cries for mercy and screams came from inside. Waiters and security guards hurried over from a distance, but I stopped them at the door. They were just having a friendly discussion. Don't disturb them. Fortunately, they didn't suspect me and dispersed. I stood guard at the door, and after a while, the sounds from inside stopped. The door opened, and Alan, with a fierce expression, walked out, holding my hand and leading me out. As we left the club, Colin caught up with us. His face was bruised, and he looked disheveled. Carrie, just because you lost your memory doesn't mean you can erase the fact that we dated. Alan's face turned dark, and he was about to make a move, but I pulled him behind me. Colin Pike, even though I don't know why I fell for you before I lost my memory, you're no good either. You know better than anyone else what happened between us. Colin froze for a moment, before quickly returning to normal. You should worry about yourself. The Pike family won't let you in. Alan's wedding has already been arranged, and it will take place next month. I froze, and slowly turned to look at Alan. Alan avoided my gaze. Colin laughed. It seems Alan didn't tell you. Well, who would take a promiscuous woman like you seriously? I didn't know how I made it back home. Alan didn't chase after me. When my best friend called, I had already been lying in bed for three days. She hurriedly came to my house and was startled by my appearance. Carrie, how did you let yourself get like this? She touched my forehead and got burned. Why is your fever so high? I'll take you to the hospital. Lauren, was I really that bad before? Why do they treat me like this? Lauren held my face. Carrie, you're not bad at all. They just don't like you. It's their loss. Believe me, if someone truly loves you, they can't not know that you've been pretending all along. I asked in confusion, is that true? Yes. You used to take good care of yourself. You shouldn't ruin your health for a worthless man. With Lauren's insistence, I went to the hospital with her. After a checkup, it turned out to be pneumonia. I needed to be hospitalized. It seemed that the fever had lasted too long, and I slept through those days. In a daze, I had many dreams. In my dreams, I was always ostracized because I was beautiful. Rumors about me would always circulate in school. I never bothered to clarify, so the rumors spread. I became the bad girl who changed boyfriends every month. When I grew up, Colin pursued me, and I thought he could shield me from unwanted attention. So I agreed. But Colin wasn't a 
good person either. He always wanted to take advantage of me. I refused and tried to break up with him, but he went crazy and tampered with my brakes, causing me to have an accident and lose my memory. After the accident, he slandered me, claiming that I had been pestering him. He quickly accepted his family's arranged marriage proposal. When I opened my eyes again, my mind was clear. Only Lauren was by my bedside. Carrie, you finally woke up. You've been talking nonsense. I thought your fever had affected your brain and you forgot about me too. I curled the corners of my mouth. I can't forget anyone, especially not you. Lauren opened her mouth wide, looking at me in surprise. She asked uncertainly, you, you remember everything? I nodded. Lauren wiped away a tear and angrily recounted what had happened in the past few days. She said that Colin and Alan had both come. Colin was scolded and sent away before he even entered the ward. Alan sneaked in while she was away and got beaten up before being driven off. I smiled with joy. Thank goodness you were here. But I noticed that Alan seemed to have a sad look in his eyes when he looked at you. Is there some misunderstanding between you two? I fell silent. Alan had pursued me before I lost my memory. And even when I was with Colin, his gaze towards me wasn't innocent. During the period of amnesia, his love for me didn't seem fake. But he was about to get married soon. What was the point of bringing this up? Lauren, I'm going abroad. So suddenly? Actually, it wasn't sudden. It had been arranged before I lost my memory, but it got delayed. The day I left, Lauren came to see me off. She hugged me and cried, telling me to take good care of myself. I helplessly replied, I'm just going to study, not disappearing forever. Before shutting off my phone, I received a message from Lauren. Alan came to ask me about you. I didn't reply, deleted the message, and turned off my phone. Ding! Wisnavel reminds you to click the subscribe button in the bottom right corner to read the complete novel. My days abroad were routine and fulfilling. Occasionally, when I was exhausted and didn't feel like working hard, I couldn't help but think of the time I spent with Alan. Even though I didn't want to admit it, the time I spent with him was the happiest period of my life. Calculating carefully, it should be around the time he got married. I picked up my phone, intending to message Lauren, but after some hesitation, I decided not to ask or inquire. It seemed like Lauren had a telepathic connection with me. The day before Alan's wedding, she called me. Alan is getting married tomorrow. Carrie, don't you want to fight for him again? I didn't know how to respond. The past between Alan and me had become a laughingstock in our friend circle. Why should I try to win him back, and in what capacity? Lauren said, a while ago, my dad and I attended a banquet and saw Alan. He seemed like a completely different person, much more mature. If it weren't for his distinctive face, I almost wouldn't have recognized him. I always feel like you two miss this chance, and it will become your biggest regret. I gave a vague response and changed the subject. Unable to sleep at night, I mindlessly scrolled through my phone and absentmindedly opened the ticket booking app. But when I thought of the evasive look in Alan's eyes that day, I felt like a bucket of cold water had been poured over me, and I quickly closed the app. Having not slept all night, I went for an early morning jog. When I opened the door, I saw a man sitting outside. He was startled by the sound of the door opening and quickly stood up, his gaze filled with resentment. Struck with astonishment, I asked, what are you doing here? Alan's hair was messy and his well-tailored suit was wrinkled. He silently looked at me for a long time before speaking. I haven't eaten in two days. Under my shocked gaze, he walked into my apartment and went to the bathroom. He was so familiar with the place, as if he had been living here. I stood at the bathroom door, uncertain and staring at it. After some time, I heard Alan's weak voice from inside. Carrie, I'm really hungry. Even in a foreign country, we were still fellow villagers. I couldn't just stand by and watch him suffer. I went to the kitchen and cooked noodles for him. By the time he came out, I had finished cooking. Wrapped in my bathrobe, his wet hair fell on his forehead, adding a touch of laziness and casualness. His well-proportioned muscles, exposed to the air, sparked one's imagination. He didn't say anything, picked up the bowl, and started eating. He finished a large bowl of noodles in just a few bites. Silently, I went to clean the bowl, but he grabbed my hand. Carrie, I really miss you. His affectionate eyes were filled with sadness, as if they would sink if they lingered for another second. I averted my gaze, indifferently pulling my hand away. Now that you've finished eating, leave now. He awkwardly stood in front of me, blocking my way, his long legs moving around the coffee table. Carrie, I know I made a mistake. Will you listen to my explanation? I struggled, and he tightened his grip on my wrist. Suppressing my anger, I said, then explain it to me. Alan, with his handsome features, said with a touch of resentment. My family wants me to enter into a political marriage, but I refuse. I didn't expect Colin to be there that day too. He was the one who told my father where I was. Do you remember when I received a phone call? That was my father giving me an ultimatum, using you as a threat. I was about to chase after you, but who knew that bastard Colin would knock me out? Carrie, at that moment, I didn't know how to explain it to you, so I didn't do it immediately. Can you please not be angry anymore? I knew that most people in our circle couldn't escape the fate of arranged marriages, but I never expected Alan to become a pawn in one. For a moment, 
I didn't know what to say. Alan moved closer, and I could smell the familiar fragrance of his shower gel. I managed to escape. Carrie, please don't drive me away, okay? Suddenly, I realized that today should have been his marriage day, but here he was. Just as I was about to ask, my phone rang. It was Colin Pike. I glanced at Alan, and his attractive lips pursed slightly. I answered the call and put it on speakerphone. Colin was not at all polite and immediately questioned me. Where are you hiding Alan? Carrie, even if you like him, so what? He's a member of the Pike family. Unless he leaves this family, he can never marry you. The Pike family doesn't need a woman who is impure and has no background. I laughed. Colin, you've told so many lies that even you believe them now. Should I make public what you did when you were chasing after me? There was silence on the other end of the line. Then, I saw that he had hung up. I put my phone aside and looked at Alan. He looked shocked, and after a moment, he lowered his head in disappointment. So, you remember everything now. I didn't deny it. Alan suppressed his usual arrogance and looked dejected. In that case, I won't bother you anymore. He went to change back into his dirty clothes. As he left, he turned back three times. Alan, I called out to him. He turned around, his eyes revealing a hidden joy. I pointed to the trash by the door. Help me take out the garbage, please. Those affectionate eyes instantly dimmed. After he left, I received a call from Lauren. Did Alan go to your place? Yes. Lauren gasped. I knew I didn't misjudge him. Alan ran away from his wedding, and his father is furious, even wanting to hunt him down. He's not with me anymore. What? That's impossible. Besides you, who else could he find? He even forced me to give him your address. Lauren's voice paused, and she quickly changed her tone. I'll make it up to you when you come back to the country. I couldn't help but smile. So you betrayed me like this. Suddenly, Lauren became serious. I just think Alan is perfect for you. When you were together, you changed completely. Trust me, baby, he's definitely the one destined for you. Whether he was my destined one, I didn't know, but not long after, I saw Alan again. He became my neighbor. At first, I adopted a policy of ignoring Alan. It seemed that Alan didn't notice my attitude. Every day, he would wait at the door when I left, holding the breakfast that I loved to eat. In the evening, he would wait in the stairwell when I returned home. If I didn't accept his breakfast in the morning, when I saw him in the evening, he would not only have breakfast in his hands, but also dinner. At first, I could ignore him, but as time went on, all the international students in this apartment building knew about his relationship with me. Alan would tell people that we were having conflicts, and he was begging for my forgiveness. Occasionally, friends who had a better relationship with me would speak up for Alan. In order to reduce the number of times my friends mentioned him, I had to accept his prepared breakfast and dinner every day. But Alan took advantage of it and would slip small notes into the bag. His drawings were ugly, the stick figures he drew were crooked, and the flowers were all twisted. When I mentioned this to Lauren, she burst into laughter. Alan's drawings are so bad, I didn't realize it, she said. I laughed too. Lauren said, you've tested him enough. Otherwise, when he gets taken away by someone else, you'll regret it. Yeah, I understand. During these days, I learned a lot of information. It was indeed as Alan had said, he was being threatened. I can't say he is completely innocent, but it's not entirely his fault either. I thought about it all night and decided to forgive him the next day. But that morning, I waited for a long time and he didn't show up. The international students from the opposite apartment told me that Alan had left overnight yesterday. I felt a chill. Did he say where he was going? He left with a woman, said they were going back to prepare for their wedding. My life has returned to peace. But in this peaceful life, it feels like something is missing. Whenever I pass by the stairwell, I can't help but look towards Alan's room. But I can no longer see that handsome young man. I wanted to message Lauren, but I was afraid to hear news of his marriage. And so, half a month passed. The area around the apartment was unsafe, with several malicious stalking incidents occurring. The girls who lived nearby often went home together, not giving the criminals a chance. Until that day, when I was delayed by something and arrived at the designated meeting place, everyone had already left. On the dark road, I hurriedly walked towards the apartment. After walking for a while, I heard footsteps behind me, following closely. In that moment, countless thoughts of death flashed through my mind. I forced myself to calm down down and reached into my bag for the pepper spray. When someone tapped my shoulder, I quickly extended my hand towards the person behind me. But unfortunately, it was too late. The person was prepared and I missed. As I was being pulled into a small alley, I thought to myself that as long as I survived today, I would do anything to be with Alan. Perhaps hearing my thoughts, someone arrived. The demon was dragged further into the alley, and I was embraced in a warm and solid embrace. A familiar voice sounded in my ears. Baby, it's okay, don't be afraid, it's okay. Upon closer listening, that voice could 
couldn't help but tremble. I belatedly looked up and confirmed that it was Alan. I threw myself into his arms and cried loudly. Alan carried me back home. I held onto him tightly, afraid that if I let go, he would run away. Alan couldn't help but laugh and cry. I'm not leaving, even if you chase me away. But I need to go wash up. Do you want to join me? I instinctively nodded. Alan carried me into the bathroom, but at the last moment, he ran out. After we both finished washing up, I lay on the bed while Alan lay beside me, speaking with lingering fear. I was only gone for half a month, and this is how you take care of yourself? He didn't say anything, but just thinking about the experience tonight made me shudder. I held back and held back, but in the end, I couldn't help but question him. Is this how you pursue someone? It's only been a few days, and you've already gone back to prepare for the wedding. Is it fun to play with me? Alan looked confused. What wedding? I repeated what the international student had said. Alan's expression was indescribable. That woman is my mother. She came to take me back to attend Colin's wedding. What? Alan was helpless and amused. Hadley Madden is pregnant, so their wedding was moved up. How come you didn't receive the news? I shook my head. Lauren never mentioned this to me, but Alan seemed to have discovered a new continent, squinting at me. Are you jealous? No. Really? Then I can go back and accept the arranged marriage from my family without worry. I angrily pinched his waist. How dare you? Alan took a sharp breath, his long arms wrapped around my waist, and his hot lips slowly descended. Carrie, I miss you so much. His rough fingertips traced along my waistline, causing shivers to run down my spine. I cautiously responded to him. His breath trembled fiercely, and in return, I received a scorching possession. Perhaps it had been too long since we were last together, but Alan couldn't control himself and we spent the whole night entangled. He discussed with me about me going back to the country, but I refused. I love you, but I love myself more. I won't give up on my own goals and plans for anything. It was as if Alan didn't hear the second half of my sentence, repeatedly confirming the first half with me. You said you love me? Carrie said she likes me, right? After saying that, he clung to me and made me repeat that sentence. I refused, so he ignited fires all over my body. When I finally fell into a deep sleep from exhaustion, I heard Alan whispering in my ear. Carrie, I love you. On the day Alan was sent back to the country, he pestered me for a kiss at the airport. I covered my swollen lips and didn't let him come close. Alan leaned close to my ear and said, It's okay, you only have one more year until graduation. We'll get married when you come back to the country. When he mentioned marriage, a mischievous smile appeared in his eyes. Just like the way he looked in bed when he told me he had learned a new position. Blushing, I sent him off. But when he really left, I felt like something was missing in my heart. One year later, I returned after completing my studies. Alan's assistant came to pick me up at the airport. When I asked about Alan's situation, the assistant was tight-lipped. Mr. Pike has just taken over Pike Group and has been extremely busy lately. I was surprised, he took over Pike Group? The assistant said, you can ask Mr. Pike for the details. Unable to obtain any information from the assistant and curious about what was going on, I decided to ask Lauren. But Lauren seemed to be busy and didn't reply to my messages. The assistant took me to Alan's residence, which was still the same house as before. I settled my luggage in the guest room, freshened up, and sent a message to Alan, letting him know that I needed to adjust to the time difference. I don't know how long I slept, but I felt myself being enveloped by a warm embrace. When I opened my eyes, I met Alan's smiling gaze. Did you sleep well? I stretched lazily in his arms. When did you come back? It was my turn to have a good sleep. I anxiously held back his wandering hands. Alan, it's still daytime. I can't control myself. Aren't you busy? Alan's voice was hoarse. These two hours won't make a difference. Three hours later, I found myself weakly curled up in his embrace. You liar. We agreed on only two hours. Alan chuckled, sounding in a good mood. I'll let you exceed the time limit next time. In the evening, Alan called me to wake up and have dinner. I ate two bowls of rice in one go before I had the energy to ask him about the company's affairs. He said that Colin had lost three major projects in a row, disappointing the shareholders. Coincidentally, during that period, Alan secured several big deals and stood out, gradually reaching his current position. I looked at him intently. Alan, tell me the truth. Did you do something to Colin? Alan neither confirmed nor denied it. Are you afraid of me? No, I'm not. It's about time you did this. You re smarter than him. Alan glanced at me. I've always been smarter than him. I felt like that glance held a lot of meaning, but I couldn't pinpoint exactly what it was. Alan suggested taking me home. I was nervous. What if your family doesn't agree to us being together? Alan looked relaxed. Relax, don't forget, you're Carrie Turner, the only heir of the Turner group. I blushed unconsciously. I've been lying to you for so long, will you be unhappy? My parents were afraid that I would meet someone with ill intentions, so they never let me reveal my family background to others. For safety reasons, they even arranged a very ordinary identity for me. That's why even Colin doesn't know my true identity. Alan half-jokingly said, Fortunately, no one knows your true identity, otherwise when would it be my turn? Yuri not bad either. Alan approached me with a smirk. Which aspect you mean? At the Pike family's ancestral home, Alan led me in and coincidentally ran into Colin and Hadley.
Hadley. Colin frowned tightly. Alan, you actually brought her back. Hadley looked at me arrogantly. Yes, Alan, you're now the heir of the group. Mom and Dad won't let an insignificant woman into our house. Alan's voice was indifferent and quiet. I've secured this position not because of a woman. He hinted at something. Sure enough, Colin's face turned pale. The outcome is still uncertain, just wait and see. Alan ignored his words and embraced me as we entered the house. At the dining table, Alan's parents weren't enthusiastic towards me. After dinner, Alan's father asked him to have a conversation in the study. After coming out of the study, his father's attitude did a complete 180-degree turn. He warmly asked me about my studies abroad. I answered one by one. He mentioned our marriage after a few sentences and asked if they could come to propose tomorrow. Colin couldn't believe it. Dad, didn't you say it's impossible for her to enter our house? Ridiculous. Do you have a say in this? Colin was unwilling and wanted to say something, but Alan said, I've already met Mr. Turner, and he's very confident in entrusting his daughter to me. Mr. Turner? His daughter? Are you talking about the leading company in our city, the Turner Group? Exactly. Colin looked at me, then at Alan, too shocked to say anything. That night, after we left, news spread from the Pike family that Hadley had a miscarriage. Alan said that after we left, Colin and Hadley had a big fight. Colin, in a moment of desperation, said that if it weren't for Hadley's pregnancy, he wouldn't have married her, but would have married me. Hadley got angry and told him that the child wasn't his. Colin became violent with her, and that's how they lost the baby. I sighed, but couldn't summon any sympathy. Regardless, it was Colin's choice. But I didn't expect that Colin would come to find me again. Outside the company building, Colin stopped me in my tracks. He he held a large bouquet of roses and eagerly handed them to me. Carrie, happy birthday. I didn't accept them. When I was with Colin, he never prepared any gifts for me on any occasion, big or small. Even when he was pursuing me, he was reluctant to put in any effort other than spending money on going out. But now, after finding out my identity, he acted completely differently and gave me flowers. Colin, seeing that I didn't accept them, casually tossed the flowers aside. If you don't like roses, it's okay. How about I take you to pick out a gift? Colin Pike, I'm your brother's woman. Colin's face stiffened for a moment, then quickly returned to normal. Are you trying to say that I'm already married? It's okay, I've already drafted a divorce agreement. Besides, you and Alan haven't gotten married yet, right? I showed him the wedding ring on my ring finger. Unfortunately, we already registered this morning. Colin opened his mouth in astonishment. How? How is that possible? I smiled. My husband has come to pick me up. Goodbye. Colin stopped me once again. Carrie, haven't you remembered what happened before? Then you must remember that you were with me. How can you be with with my brother now, but I am with him. I said softly, I love him. After saying that, I didn't look at his expression and walked towards Alan with big strides. Alan was afraid that Colin would cause trouble, so he picked a nearby date and held our wedding. During the wedding, Colin sat below the stage, his face ashen. Around him, there were voices whispering and pointing at him. Do you see that? That's Colin Pike. I heard that he despised the Turner family's daughter and kicked her while she had amnesia. Who would have thought that he would look decent but do such shameless things? I also heard that he wants a divorce but the Madden family is not easy to deal with. They caught him in a compromising situation and threatened him. His days will be difficult from now on. After the wedding, Alan left the guests behind and took me to our new home. As soon as we entered, he pressed me against the door. I blushed and tried to push him away. What if they find out we're gone? You should be worried about me, my wife. I haven't seen you for three days. His hand slipped under the layers of my wedding dress. You look so charming today. The moment I saw you, I wanted to do this. You rascal. Baby, today, I'll show you what a rascal is. Is. With a gentle tug of his clearly defined fingers, the wedding dress fell to the ground, and his warm body enveloped mine. I couldn't help but let out a cry. At the same time, there was a knock on the door. Outside the door was Colin's voice, filled with desperation. You can't get married. Carrie, come out. I gritted my teeth and whispered, Alan, let's go to the room. Here is just fine. The knocking grew louder, shaking the heavens, as if he was about to break down the door. Colin roared, you were with me first. How could you marry him? Carrie, come out, please. Inside the room, I bit my lip until it bled. It wasn't until Colin was taken away by someone that Alan carried me, weak and exhausted, into the room. My wife, the night is long. Enjoy yourself. Colin's rampage in our new home was discovered by his parents, and in a fit of anger, his father sent him to Africa as punishment. Hadley not only didn't divorce him, but also went with him. Meanwhile, two years later, I gave birth to a pair of twins and returned to take over the family business. Alan, worried about the children, brought them to the company and became a hands-on father. During a meeting, Alan held one child in 
each hand, and video called me. Honey, the children miss you. I smiled. I'll come home early tonight. But when I returned home, there was no one except Alan. Seeing his triumphant smile, I became furious and grabbed a pillow to hit him. Alan, you lied to me again. He hugged me tightly, gasping for breath. Honey, it's been a long time since we had some alone time. Ever since we had children, my mind had been filled with thoughts of them. Coupled with taking over the company, I seemed to have truly neglected Alan. So, I couldn't bear to refuse him. The consequence of indulgence was that I saw two lines on the pregnancy test the following month. I felt like crying without tears. Alan Pike, I will kill you. All right, all right, I'll get a vasectomy tomorrow. I don't believe you. 